So the watch that I wore the most this year is the Mark Newson designed iPod Isopod Dual Time. I bought this watch because one, I'm a huge fan of Mark Newson's design work, and two, it packs quite a punch. It's a fully cost certified movement with a dual time complication. Um, but I think most importantly, it's one of the most comfortable watches I own and it looks like nothing else out there. Oh, hi there. The watch I wore most this year was one of the new Seiko divers, the SPB149. Uh, it's got a beautiful blue dial. It's the perfect size. I really love this watch. Seiko, you nailed it. So the watch that I wore most this year was my mom's late 90s, early 2000s Ladies Below a watch. This watch I wore the day that I actually got engaged in 2020 and the crown actually fell off that day. So I'm hoping to have it fixed and maybe wear it the day I get married as my something old. The watch I wore most was this Wenger Swiss military watch. It was a gift from my father, who got it at Sam's Club when he found out I worked at Hodinkee. My initial impression when I first received it was, Oh, what is this? Did you not know your boy was fancy? But no, I love it. It's matte gray, brushed titanium, super lightweight, and it's a perfect quarantine watch. It keeps me humble and reminds me of my parents. As a kid, I was obsessed with two things. First is that airplane behind me. Second is this Rolex GMT Master II. It was the first watch I ever fell in love with. And in 2020, I was able to get my hands on one. I've been wearing the hell out of it since. Fishing, cycling, camping, hiking, you name it. And uh, it's, it's been a worthy companion and it'll be with me for the rest of my life. I'm sharing this, Cartier Census MM. I bought this watch to celebrate the launch of Holding Key Japan last year. I love this combination, yellow gold and stainless steel. The MM size is so comfortable that I don't need to take it off while working at the desk. So my pick this year is the Rolex 16570, also known as the Polar. Um, this is just easily one of the most comfortable watches I own. And um, you know, one thing I really like about it is that it has a thinner profile than the Submariner. Um, and I also like the GMT hand a lot. Not that anyone is traveling this year, but I actually use it to track uh, UTC, which is important as a programmer. This year I've been wearing my dad's watch. It's a cheapie. It cost about a hundred bucks, maybe 30 years ago at a department store in Orlando. Uh, and he wore it to work uh, back in the day and then gave it to me when he retired because he no longer needed to know what time it is. It's from this Danish brand called Skagen, if anybody wants to chase it down. And it's nothing fancy, but um, I haven't seen my dad all year, and this reminds me of him, uh, so I've been wearing it in tribute. Miss you, Dad. The watch I wore most this year was my Tudor Black Bay 58. I found that even while working from home, I kept reaching for this one. The bracelet's super comfortable, I love that it's a little bit of heft on my wrist, and maybe most importantly, it made me feel like I was a little more put together, even when I was wearing sweatpants. The watch I wore most in 2020 is my stainless steel Cartier Santos. I bought it a little over a year ago on vacation with family and in a year that's been really tough for a lot of us, it reminds me of that really special time that I was able to spend with loved ones. The watch I wore most in 2020 is my Seiko SPB143 Prospex Diver. It's just the right size, I love the specification and the historical design language and it just looks great on a NATO. I wore it a lot this year and I plan to do the same next year. The watch I wore most this year was my Serica WM Brown edition. Uh, I love this watch because it pays homage to the Dirty Dozen watches that came out of World War II, uh, and it has a modern manual wound Edda movement, so couldn't ask for anything more. The watch I wore the most this year is my GA2100 Casio in black, of course. Uh, I'd love to show it to you. Ironically, I don't have it with me because um, <laughs> because I don't know how to pack in advance. And I could really use a watch right now considering it's dark 23 hours a day and I have no idea what time it is. <laughs> this is my Tudor Black Bay Black, the Eta version from 2015. Um, if anything, this year gave us ample opportunity for reflection, for, for getting back to basics and for appreciating the things that we have. Um, and as my first serious watch, uh, this, uh, this piece encompasses all of those things for me. The watch I wore most in 2020 was this Audemars Piguet Royal Oak 15500ST. It was a big year for me because I got married, 
My wife also got her Royal Oak and every time we go out, we always want to match her watches. I think I'll be wearing it more next year as well, uh, of course, with her. The watch I wore most in 2020 would be this Longines Heritage Railroad. And the reason I wore it the most is honestly because it's just so simple. It's black and white. It can go with a lot of different things. Um, I've got it on a black alligator strap right now, but you could easily put this on like a black calfskin strap to dress it down a bit. And it's got a unique Canadian railroad dial where you have the zero in place of the 12 up top, which is a bit cool. So that's the watch I wore most in 2020. This is my Rolex Datos Lady. Um, I received this watch when I graduated from college and it essentially started my collection. It had previously belonged to my mom. So I think of her every time that I wear it. And I would say that it got the most first time this year because of its small size, which I think makes it especially compatible with work from home life. The watch that I wore most in 2020 is my Omega Speedmaster Professional. It's a watch that I started wanting in 1969. I finally got one in the late 1990s, and I've been wearing it on and off pretty much ever since. This year, mostly off. The watch I wore most this year was my Seiko SKX 007. It was my first mechanical watch, which means it will always hold a special place in my heart and in my collection. It was also given to me many moons ago by my girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife. It was nice looking at a watch that brought me joy and comfort while plugging away during the craziness that was 2020. The watch I wore most this year is something new that I added to my collection. Uh, it's definitely the most complicated watch I've ever owned. Uh, definitely the most complicated watch I've ever worn. Uh, it's kind of similar to the one last year, but it's a little bit more extra, if you will. Uh, it's this yellow gold AP Royal Oak Perpetual Calendar reference 2500. 800, that's 25,800. Uh, it's from 1996, and the cool thing about it is it measures only 33 millimeters, so it's really, really small. This is my Rolex GMT Master II Batman. It's the watch I wore most in 2020. Uh, I put it on to write reference points on the GMT Master, uh, and it gave me a lot of inspiration. Um, and I found I just kept wearing it for much of the rest of the year. The watch I wore the most this year is Speedmaster. Uh, 1957 Torilogy. The reason is I bought this watch uh, when I joined the Hodenki Japan team. Uh, I like this size. I've decided to go with the IWC Pilot's Watch Mark 18 Edition Hodenki. This is a watch I love and every time I put it on it makes me feel like I can handle anything. And given the year we've been having, that's been really nice. The watch I wore the most this year is the Baltic Aquascape, which is this. Um, I picked it because it's my first dive watch. I love the feel and look of it, and it fits nice on my wrist. This is my Cartier Santos Medium, which I bought earlier this year to celebrate one year at Hedinki. Uh, I bought it because I was born and raised in Paris, and Cartier and its heritage means a lot to me as a French person. So uh, yeah, that's that. Thank you. So the watch that I wore most in 2020 is the Grand Seiko SBGW252, which is the 2017 re-edition of the original uh, Grand Seiko from 1960. This watch is beautiful, simple, and it's a constant reminder for me that less is more. So this year the watch I wore the most was my Tudor Black Bay 58, um, but it's actually not the watch that I wanted to talk about, uh, which is uh, the Hodinkee Q Timex. Um, which is the only watch to steal some wrist time from the Tudor. Um, and the reason I'm sharing it is because um, it showed me that watches don't have to be expensive or fancy in order to bring you joy. And I think everybody could use a little extra joy in 2021. The watch I wore most this year was my Rolex Submariner 5513. This was my first year at Hodinkee and the first really big article that I wrote on the site was on this watch. It's special to me for sentimental reasons and I just wore it the most out of any other watch I own this year. This is my Grand Seiko SBGW231. As a designer, I pay a lot of attention to the details and there's nothing that feels out of place on this watch. Everything is perfectly executed and that is why this is the watch that I wore most this year. The watch I wore most this year is a simple, no frills, swatch skin classic. I have a rotation with one of my dive watches, but I found that on those long cold winter days when I'm wearing too many layers, this is just more comfortable and I barely feel it on my wrist. 